Hey everyone, Dion here, and today we'll be going over the process of setting up Ubiquiti's unified controller on a Raspberry Pi using Docker. Managing a unified network requires you to run Ubiquiti's unified controller software uh, somewhere on the network. You have a couple of options to do this. Uh, you can download the app and run it on a machine on your network. Um, but you do have to keep the app open if you want it to continue to collect statistics. Um, the second option is you can purchase one of Ubiquiti's cloud keys, uh, which can be around 200 bucks. Um, and that's just a device you plug into the network that acts as the brain. Or you can do like I did and run it on a Raspberry Pi 4 inside a Docker container. I chose to run it on a Raspberry Pi because they're fairly cheap. You can pick up a Raspberry Pi 4 2 gigabyte model for around 50 bucks. But uh, if you do purchase it in a kit, they're more like 100 bucks. And ultimately, I'm the one that's in control of the data, the backups, and so forth. Um, and I can always repurpose the Pi later on if I change my mind about how I'm using it. Now, just as a note, um, if you're interested in any of the devices I'm talking about today, uh, there are links to all of these things down in the description. So a couple of things to consider here and why I went with the Raspberry Pi 4 for this project is because it's got gigabit ethernet, um, the processor is much better um, than the Raspberry Pi 3. And also, um, you, don't, you definitely don't want to run this thing over Wi-Fi. Um, in the chance that you are provisioning a device in your unified network, um, you could kick your Raspberry Pi off Wi-Fi while it's trying to do that. And so it's definitely better to have it plugged in. Um, and yeah, it's just a better way to go. The first thing we'll need to do is get Raspberry Pi OS running on the Pi. Let's go to raspberrypi.com and click on software. Here, we're gonna download the Raspberry Pi imager. I'm going to pick the download for Windows. After imager is downloaded, go ahead and open it and go through the install process. Hit finish and open imager. Hit choose OS and pick Raspberry Pi OS. Hit choose storage and pick your SD card. Hit write to put Raspberry Pi OS on your card. Hit yes to erase your card and continue. This will take a bit to complete since imager downloads Raspberry Pi OS and then writes it to your card. Just uh, go do something else for a while. Now that it's all finished, go ahead and pull your SD card out, put it in your Raspberry Pi, and boot it up. At this point, you'll want to plug your Pi into a screen and get a mouse and keyboard so we can do a few things on the Pi. Now let's jump over to the Pi. Since this is the first boot up of the Pi, it's going to do some things and reboot a couple of times on its own. Now that we're on the Pi desktop, we can get started, go ahead and hit next. Here you'll want to pick your country, language, and time zone. I'm going to pick United States, American English, and I'm in the Denver time zone. I'm also going to pick use English language and use US keyboard. And let's hit next. It'll take just a minute while it sets up our locale. All right, now it's going to ask us to set up a password. I'm just going to stick with the default Raspberry. So I'm just going to hit next. Um, and as you can see, mine's got a black border. So I'm gonna say, yes, mine has a border, so fix that on the next reboot. Um, it's gonna to wanna to search for a Wi-Fi network. I'm gonna skip this because we're gonna be plugging it in. And now it's gonna ask if we wanna update, and I'm gonna hit yes. Now this is gonna take a while, so uh, again, go find something to do, because it'll be a little bit. Now 
Okay, now that it's done, go ahead and hit OK. And let's hit Restart. And it will do one final reboot here before we go ahead and get started on the setup. All right, first thing we're going to do is open up the terminal, uh, maximize this here, and then we're going to go ahead and install Docker. We'll do this by putting in the following command. Uh, it's curl dash lowercase s capital SL and then HTTPS colon slash slash get dot docker dot com and we are going to pipe that over to SH and this will take just a minute so get comfortable again all right now that docker is installed we're going to add the pi user to the docker group so that it can run docker commands we'll do sudo user mod dash a capital G docker and pi and then hit enter. And now that those two things are done, we need to reboot the Pi so we can do sudo reboot for a quick reboot. All right, let's go back into the terminal now that we're back. And we are going to install Docker Compose and we'll do this by putting in sudo pip3 install docker-compose um, what docker compose is going to let us do is uh, configure our docker container using a configuration file um, in the yaml language which makes it really easy to set up docker containers Now that we've got Docker Compose installed, we're going to make a couple of folders. So here in the PyUsers home folder, we're going to make a folder called Docker. We're going to change directory into that folder. Um, now we're going to make a folder called Unify. And we'll also change directory again to get into Unify. And this is where we are going to put our configuration file and store the data that the Unify Docker container generates. Let's go ahead and set up our Docker Compose file. So go ahead and put in nano space docker-compose.yml and this will open the nano editor in our Docker Compose file. Go ahead and type in version. We're gonna use 3.7 here. Uh, services, we're going to create a Unify service. And there, make sure when you uh, tab over here, it's not tabs, it's two spaces. So unify, um, and then image is four spaces over. So image, we're gonna use Jacob Alberti slash unify, and we want the latest version of that image. Container name is going to be unify. restart and we are going to say always so even if the Raspberry Pi gets rebooted it will automatically restart this container for us um, volumes this is where the data generated by the Unify controller is going to be saved so we're mapping a local data folder in this Unify directory we created to the Unify folder inside of the docker container so it'll any data will get saved locally so we can access that to back it up or whatever. Uh, now we're going to add some ports. We've got 3478. We've got 6789. Next, we've got 8080. Next one is 8443. Next one here is 8843. And we've got 
8880. And finally, we've got 10001. And then we've got one last uh, environment variable that we're going to set for the container, um, which is the time zone. And I'm going to say TZ equals America Denver, because that's my time zone. And that's it. Now, go ahead and hit Control O to save the file, and then Control X to quit. And if we do an ls here we can see that we've got our docker compose file saved here and now we can do a docker compose up dash d which will get the container started for us um, what docker is doing is downloading the images necessary to start the container um, this will take just a minute and once it's done it will open the container or start the container for us and then it will kick us back to the terminal Now that the container is up and running, we can do docker container ls, and we can see our container running there. It was created 12 seconds ago, and it's been up for seven seconds. Next, we'll type in hostname i to get the IP address of our Raspberry Pi, which we can use to access the docker container. So now if we go ahead and open our web browser, we can go to https colon slash slash, uh, since my IP address was 10.0.0.43, I'll put that in, and we're going to go to port 8443. And of course, the certificate's not valid, so we're gonna hit advance and scroll down, and we will say proceed. And here we are ready to begin the setup on our controller. Um, you can also access the controller at https colon slash slash localhost port 8443 as well. You won't be able to update the Docker container inside of the container, like through the software, through the normal way, when it says it has an update. So what you have to do is actually come into the terminal again and browse to this folder, Docker Unify, and we're gonna put in docker-compose down to turn the container off. And then to update it, we're gonna do docker-compose up dash dash build dash D. What that will do is download a new updated version of the image, and restart your container. That's the process of setting up Ubiquiti's Unify controller on a Raspberry Pi 4. It isn't super difficult, but there are definitely a few things that you're gonna have to get comfortable with, um, like the terminal and Docker, especially if you've never used things like that before. Um, there are a ton of YouTube videos out there uh, if you want to go out and learn some more. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, it would be awesome if you hit like below. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please subscribe, and I hope to see you again soon. Peace.